Hey, everybody. We're here with Katrina Zish, style contributor for the early show, and she's here to tell us what's hot for the fall. So we got some things in your hands. What are these? These are Chanel nail polish colors, the hottest, the latest, the newest. These become, these reach like cult status. People go on waiting with simply to get the top Chanel nail color every season, which is amazing. They started this big trend with the vamp. It's like a, almost like a dark red black in the 90s. So every year, everyone waits to find out what is the Chanel color going to be. This one I love. It's almost like a, it's a khaki color, not your typical pink or red or even black, which you shouldn't be doing this fall. But this was a limited edition run. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the phones. No black? No black. The goth moment is over. You can do dark. We've got dark shades here. One is called steel. It's kind of a sparkly gunmetal gray. Strong, which is a little bit more of a swirly, rich purple, but the black is a bit passe. I wore black this summer. Was that okay? I mean, we're not officially in fall. We're not officially in fall, but um, put away the black. Okay. Okay. Unless, unless it's for Halloween. Okay, no, but I really like the color that you're wearing right now, but it's kind of like the khaki rose. I'm, I'm actually, I'm demonstrating the khaki rose because Fashion's Night Out, I'm sure a few of you heard about it. Great live stream on here on CBS.com. And of course, you know, everyone was out in the streets having a great time in New York. It was an international event. So I wore this in honor of Fashion's Night Out. And this was from Chanel's limited edition run of three shades of khaki for Fashion's Night Out. Now, you said that people are on waiting lists for these colors. How did you get them? Well, luckily, I've been working in this industry for so long. I'm like a fashion dinosaur that luckily I have some I have some hookups with PR companies. And so I say, hey, listen, I want to talk about these trends. So I, you know, give them a call or give them an email, say, hey, you know, can you hook me up with this? And they send them right over. Let me tell you, that's a perk and a half. That's amazing. How much do they normally go for at the store? 25 bucks. So if you want a little bit of Chanel in your life, 25 bucks, even though it is nail polish, is not a bad price to pay, especially because, I mean, nail polish lasts a long time. I don't know if I've ever finished a bottle of nail polish. But sometimes they go bad. And I heard that you're supposed to put them in the refrigerator. I have never heard, I've heard that that actually doesn't work, but usually what you can do is just add a little bit of um, nail polish remover if it gets thick and it thins it right out. Really? It's like great, baby. Absolutely. So tell me about Fashion Night Out. Fashion Night Out was amazing. I was actually hosting an event downtown at the, Car- at the Karen Millen store in Soho last night, and actually a lot of our early show producers came by to say hi, which was fantastic. And um, I mean, it was just so amazing seeing everybody spilling out into the streets, having fun, you know, drinking champagne. I mean, it was really such an epic event and also such a great, uh, really, impetus to, to you know, boost the economy, especially in the retail sector, which, of course, has taken a beating in the past couple of years. But um, it's really become one of the biggest parties of the year. So part of your daily life is hanging out with big fashion celebrities. I'm sure you've picked up some tricks of the trade from them. You've met Tyra, I hear. Yes, yes. Tyra, Tyra and I've met several times. I actually had breakfast with Tyra and Andre Leontali the other day. I used to work with Andre at Vogue, so so he's he's my he's my bud. But it was cute because I said to Tyra, I knew Fashion Week was coming up, and you know, there's lots of pictures being taken, and so I wanted to know what is the right way to pose on the red carpet. If I want a foolproof picture of like a headshot, what do I do? Well, Tyra gave me some great tips. So first of all, for the red carpet, she said, you really, there's not one foolproof pose. She said, even women who are going to work should figure out the poses and their angles. Pose in front of the mirror. You look like Tyra right now because she talks like that. (laughs) I think think I'm I'm, I'm channeling Tyra. I might smize in a minute. Watch out. Don't we all? I'm feeling fierce. Um, But but it was so cute with with the head, with the headshot thing, what she said, she calls it the turtle. And she said, it looks bad from the side, so I'm going to do it from the side to show you I'm, I'm really taking one for the team. Yeah. But you start like this. You sit up straight. You do it okay. And you stick your neck out like a turtle. And then you kind of, you lift it up a little bit. You relax. Put your chin down a little bit. You relax your face. And you're in this very uncomfortable posture. But from the front, you're looking fierce. From the side, not. So you don't want anyone to snap you from the side in that. But see, now you're leaning back. Oh. You're not turtling. The, it's the, all about the, the entire head turtles. The shoulder structure stays back. You feel really bizarre, but after you do it a few times, and then you see the results, you're like, I'm going to do the turtle every day. Am I doing it? Do I have it? Am it's I turtling? It's a beautiful thing for your bone structure, and it's fantastic. So I call it the ty- I call it. She calls it the turtle. I call it the tiger turtle. I like it. Rick, are you turtling right now? <laughs> I saw you, <laughs> right? <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. Everyone rock the turtle. <laughs> That's the biggest trend for fall, the tiger turtle. So we have some goodies here. The goodies just showed up. Oh, my gosh. I love it. All right. Put the nail polish down. Yeah, give me a purse because this is really important. Okay. This is the bag shape of the season because, I was, we're, you know, 
ho- the hobo bags, the big kind of sh- sloppy bags. I was going to say schlumpy. At this point, they feel schlumpy to me because I've seen them so many times. I've got them in my closet, but I put them away. It's really about the structured ladylike bag. Think Grace Kelly. Think classic elegance. Think January Jones in Mad Men. That's the inspiration. We saw lots of designers doing almost more of a retro 50s and 60s look on the runway. Cinched waists, fuller skirts, and then the accessories are really these structured ladylike bags. They have a really a, kind of a solid frame on top. And again, if you can get it in like a rich red color, even sometimes a bright red color, because red is the color of the season, you're good to go. Now, what if we got this in like a khaki color to match the nails? You could do, well, actually, I would say get a camel color because camel also, camel and red are the two must-have colors of the season for clothing. And of course, red lipstick, too, is, is very important. Don't, but I wouldn't mix them all together because you never want to be too matchy-matchy. Pick one statement uh, item and do it. Don't be like, oh, red's in. I'm going to wear my red nail polish and my red lipstick, and I'm going to carry a red ladylike bag. No, that's a fashion though. Unless it's Halloween and you want to be the devil. Then you have to wear black nail polish. Ah, <laughs> just kidding. Finally. So black is black is not the black of this season right now. Black is not the new black. Right. <laughs> camel, red. Camel, especially if for the coat that you must get, it's a camel coat. And there's so many beautiful ones out there. Think of like Ally McGraw and Love Story. I mean, it's really that kind of collegiate, um, kind of nouveau preppy look. And Michael Kors does a great one. Tommy Hilfiger does a beautiful one. Every price point, there's something out there for you. The great ones at Zara, fantastic. Fabulous. So what do we have that we're going to put inside the structured bag? These are really fun. These are, I mean, what one of my favorite candies is Tootsie Rolls, but these are shoes called Footsie Rolls. And I mean, they literally <laughs> roll. It is. It's cute, right? Come on. It's a cute name. And what I love. <laughs> it's corny. <laughs> it's cute though. Anyway. So what you literally do is they literally, they're ballet flats, which are great. But they have a really soft sole, so you can roll them up super tiny in your purse, whether you're traveling, whether you've got a bag. Even if you're going, even if you have a a decent-sized clutch, you can put these in. So at the end of that Fashion Side Out cocktail party, like I did last night, I ran out the door and I slipped my footsie rolls on, and it's fantastic. I wouldn't wear these. These are not the kind of things that you wear all day long. These are the kind of thing when your dogs are barking, you want to put on the footsie rolls. These are emergency shoes. My life has officially changed right now. Fashion emergency solved right here. Oh my gosh. They're They're really cute. And they're really inexpensive. Yeah. How much do they go for? About 15 bucks. Between 15 and 25 bucks. And where can I pick them up? For $25. You can pick, you can check um, out Footsie Roll's website. Great. Footsie Roll's.com. Yeah. Let's see with a Y. Perfect. And they come, they come, I mean, We've got this beautiful red color here. They've got a little shoe bag. They have a mini shoe bag that comes with them. And then they give you a big shoe bag so you can put your heels or whatever you're wearing in them. They think they, of they, everything. They're thinking. They're thinking. Right. Because my question was, can they be attached? Because knowing me, I have so many to each other. So I have so many things in my bag and I take out my wallet. One footsie falls out. And then I'm the in a here. footsie, you know. Conundrum. You're back in a fashion emergency situation. Exactly. But there's a bag that we can put there's them both a in. little bag, and I'm going to undo it right now if I can. Um, but what I love about it is because they also supply the bigger bag, so you can put your um, other shoes. There's a little bag, the little shoe bag. Isn't that cute? And then you've got the big one, which is fantastic. So Perfect. the shoes that you've been wearing around are not going to get anything dirty, and they're not going to get banged up. Fabulous. What else do we have? Well, I want to put let's put those gloves. They look like just plain old fleece gloves, but oh no, these are the Echo High Touch gloves. Ooh. Mm-hmm. A little ET, a little, you know, a little oh, futuristic. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and magically, I have an iPhone. So this actually has technology. You don't have to keep taking off your gloves to work on your smartphone or any kind of touch sensitive device. This actually has technology where, if you see, you can actually manipulate the phone just like you would with your finger with this great little textured fabric thing. I'm sure it's very high tech and I'm not going to tell you the technical name, but it's this thingy on the finger and it really works on these touch devices. Awesome. Because <laughs> when I, during the winter, you're pretty much, it's like you have to take off you your take glove and you drop and the glove. You're, you're dropping a lot of those pairs, aren't you? No. But these, when these don't clip together either. Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Or I'll put them in the footsie rolls bag. Ideas are generating right today. Here. I love it. Oh, look at that. She swiped it. I know. Shh. 
what well, you need to be you need that you need gloves like the kid on the string like your little mittens around your thing I, i'm guilty of that too i'm just i'm teasing i lose i lose i lose I'm like full pairs of shoes one i'll be like it's a very large platform stiletto where's the other one i just can't seem to find it great so what else do we have all right we over here let's, let's see. oh come over here this is the new ipod nano well, you can do that too, especially the pink suits you. Um, and it's so tiny, and it's the smallest one yet, and it's adorable. But the coolest thing is, I'm zooming in, this launched September 1st. So if you want the newest, the latest, the hottest, the pinkest, this is the way to go. My big question is, does it crack? Because I got the iPhone 4, and I dropped it, and I got a slash, which I call the Spidey app because it looks like Spider-Man. <laughs> um, you know, listen, if you, if you drop it, if you step on it by mistake, these things, I mean, they're still delicate. I mean, you, you, we bang them around like, you know, they, they can't break. But it's still a very high-tech piece of technology. There is glass involved, so it could crack. So you still have to be careful with it. But this is so tiny, you can stick it in your pocket. Perfect. Clearly, I'm a klutz, so I have to just deal with that issue separately. <laughs> so can you just we'll listen to music on this or, like? You can listen to music. There's a pedometer on it. There's an FM radio on this. So oh, I love the high-tech awesome. and sort of the retro high-tech. Totally. They, they've got everything. Love it. These tiny oh, stopwatch. Apparently, I've started. Right. Cool. Fabulous. What else do we have? All right. Let's be intellectual. We can try. It's Saturday morning. Maybe, maybe Monday. But Suzanne Collins, the Hunter Games trilogy. Um, it, this is amazing, and we actually recommended this for the must-have read for women, which is interesting because it's a little, it's a little edgy, it's a little violent. There, there's some some blood going on, but. This is, you know, women typically are associated with, oh, they have the romance, the beach read. Women are embracing this series because it's just so captivating and it really sucks you in. So, and, and it's going to keep you going for fall, maybe one a month, and then suddenly it's Christmas time and you can put something else on your wish list. But this is definitely the must-have book series to have right now. Suzanne Collins, The Hunger Games trilogy. What's it about? Give me one sentence. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, it's you know it's it's about um, it, it's about this this village where teenagers, either a boy or a girl, are sent to participate in the Hunger Games. It's basically a fight to the death, and if you win, then your family has fortune and you are basically allowed to live. So there's this one young girl who keeps winning and winning and winning, but then suddenly she sort of starts a rebellion against the governing body and everything. And it takes place in the future, right? Yes, it does. This is sort of an alternate universe. Um, and it's, it's, it's really sort of, it's almost retro in the fact that there's something almost like a tribal element right. to it, but it's, it's very futuristic. So it really is, is just a captivating read. You can't awesome. put them down. It kind of sounds like Matrix meets Survivor to me. That's a real, that's a really good point. And then I think if you also wear the Echo gloves with the little thing on the finger, you, you've got the outfit and the book at the same time. Perfect. So okay. what do we have here? All right. Jonathan Franzen, um, this is on the New York Times bestseller list right at this very moment. Um, this is just one of those books. It, it's, a, it's a slower read, so we, we joke that, you know, you, it could take you to Christmas as well. It could take you all fall to read. But it's really about, it, it's, it's kind of autobiographical. And it's really about a family who really seems to have it all together. And they're very creative. They're, they're respected in their neighborhood. But they're, they're really then suddenly something changes. And it's really how families develop and change. There's lots of interesting dynamics between the husband and wife and the kids. It's really something that you can probably relate to, um, but at the same time, there's some very unique things that happen in this book. So, it's great. It's a really good one. Yeah. People, it's interesting because I'm, you know, just looking at this, I mean, people are really talking about friends and in, in the same sentences, Tolstoy and, and Thomas Pinchon. So, I mean, this is, if you really want to also impress people at cocktail parties, <laughs> read this book over the weekend. Fantastic. So, let's talk a little bit just about fashion do's and don'ts in oh, general. Yeah. We just had Labor Day. Yeah. Is the cardinal rule that you can't wear white after Labor Day still in effect? No. I don't I, I don't believe in that rule because just the shade of winter white, almost a beautiful cream, something that actually Michael Kors does beautifully, it's appropriate. But what people forget is that it's really about the, the texture and the weight of the fabric. So you shouldn't be wearing white linen because that just is seasonally inappropriate. Linen is a summer fabric. But if you have a, like a creamy corduroy a pair of corduroys, you know, or a creamy cashmere turtleneck sweater, something really luxe, and then throw, throw that camel coat on top of it or even a navy pea coat. That's the perfect way to still rock white when it's chilly outside. 
So, I mean, I even think of you know, Dr. Zhivago. There's just, there's just something about all of those elements. Even if, I mean, even if you're someone who loves, you know, loves fur or faux fur or whatever, it can still be that white color. But again, it's really about the weight of the fabric as opposed to the color itself. Fantastic. I love the way you talk about clothes and colors. You're like a creamy turtleneck. <laughs> Sounds like you're talking about food. Just like, hey, <laughs> well, I can, I can talk about cupcakes with, with similar enthusiasm. So. <laughs> Great. I also have, I, you know, I want to ask you, because I have a lot of guy friends who want to be stylish, but they're kind of lazy. They don't really know what to do. They don't want to, like, get a class or have to go shopping with someone. What are some quick tips, some, you know, a little cheat sheet for guys who want to look good, but don't really want to have to think about it? Yeah. I, th- I think it's important. I mean, there's certain accessories that can really pull a guy's look together like this. And one of those is the aviator sunglasses. Again, for guys, really, a lot of times you err on the side of classic. Guys, I think sometimes are like, oh, I need to have something new and trendy. And that immediately, I think, for most men, makes them look like they're trying too hard. So if you stick with the very kind of masculine classics, then you're in good shape. So the aviators, absolutely, especially with preppy coming back this season, those are big ones. Even something as simple as a scarf, a beautiful cashmere scarf. You know, you can be wearing what, you know, whatever it may be, not sweatpants. But I mean, even if, you know, you're, you're leaving work and it's kind of chilly and it's not time for an overcoat, you bring out your cashmere scarf. It keeps you warm and it suddenly just... Be- pulls this entire look together. So it's not fussy. It's not like, oh, you, you know, I'm a fashiony guy. You can still be a guy's guy, wear a scarf, and have all the women do double takes. Love it. That's what you want, right? That's the point. It's always the eventual goal. Yeah. Now, I know you talked about the collet. Is that what it's called? The collet. Yes, exactly. Rhymes with wallet. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's it looks like the typical, I don't know where it went, it's over there somewhere, but basically everything that we put, you know, all those the cute little... um. Things. Oh, people are mobilizing. We're getting the call. The call is happening. Someone's on the floor. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Behind the scenes, this is it. Um, well, the call is coming, but basically what it is, it's a wallet sort of and a cell phone, a smartphone holder protector at the same time. It's just like those typical things that go around the edges of your smartphone Blackberry and oh, oh, look, it's a call. It. Here we go. Appears. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Champagne. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, I mean, this looks like the typical thing a lot of us have on our phones, but flip it around and Ta-da. you can, you know, slide in your ID, your driver's license, your credit cards, a little bit of cash. I mean, you know, you can't go overboard. There's no room for lipstick in here, ladies, but this is why we recommend this for men. But it, it's, it's a great way to kind of combine everything in one. Now, of course, <laughs> Chris Raggy said, great, then I can lose my cell phone and my credit cards all That's what I was thinking. I mean, as someone who loses things regularly, <laughs> shoes, gloves. No. Um, yes, but this this will just teach you to be a more responsible person because if you lose this, <laughs> you're in big trouble. Now, my question is: Is this just going to support people's addictions to their cell phones? I don't think that I don't think anything can, can take away from people's addictions to their cell phone. I mean, you know, maybe maybe it might. You know, I mean, normally I guess you'd have that moment where you reach into your back pocket to get your wallet out, but I think that that second is not really going to happen. Here. Oh, here we go. I mean, it, it just seems to me like it's a like synthetic jack you know, thing. There's a special name for it. Yeah. But yeah. I don't remember. But anyone, yeah, it's just, it's just a texture anyone? of the fabric that, 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 that creates the that's a that's a good that's point. It's almost like it's almost reminds me of like an eighties members only jacket. Right. It's <laughs> that's, packed that's in pieces. Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's a maybe it's dead stock members only fabric. That's and right. someone see? Exactly. In the era of E. T. we're we're having an eighties moment here. I love it. That's what good happened call. to all that all that fabric. Now <laughs> what is it? See? I know E Link fabric. Mm-hmm. Now another thing about the collet is what do you do with your loose change? You don't have loose change. Pay, pay with a credit, pay with a credit card. Pay with, yeah, it's, it's all plastic, plastic or paper. Fantastic. Um, do we have anything else? We have a messenger bag. Oh, this is good. Or, yes, or, you know, everyone loves to call, you know, the man bag, the man purse, or the merce, of course. Um, guys can get away with bags if they're sturdier, if they're, you, you wouldn't, I wouldn't go smaller with this for a guy. You know, don't, oh. don't be like, oh, I have it, because size matters. <laughs> Yes, guys, size does matter. Uh, but this, these are great. I mean, the messenger bag, of course. This one's from Sturdy. It's from Banana Republic. It's rugged. It's structured. It's a little, it's durable. And um, you can throw your computer in there. You can do whatever you want. But what's great about it is it's also still on trend because you military is hot for fall for men and for women. So this is saying, okay, I'm not fussy, but again, it's a nod to the trend without being overboard. You're not emblazoned with any sort of, you know, faux epaulets on here or anything, but you have the olive drab color. 
which of course screams military, but scream silently if you can do that. So, so awkward. Talking about military, how far, I mean, how deep into the military are we talking? Are we talking camo or just? Uh, actually, there is there is a lot of camo. I mean, even even at J. Crew, they've got these cute little crop camo pants. I know because I bought them. Um, but yeah, there there is camo, but it's done interestingly. So you go go to J. Crew, you've got your cute little camo crop pants with the little grow green bow at the waist, adorable. And then you go into Prada, and you have yeah. Prada, Prada. does not have camo. Want to bet? No, if you got Prada, <laughs> you know, you know more. Than no, I Prada. Think. It's, no, it's amazing. Prada actually, you you know, you walk in the store and they've got all of the beautiful again the ladylike structured shape that I showed you, <laughs> but in a modified camo. They even have little evening bag clutches, completely sequins, in camouflage pattern. It's amazing. Yes. Wow. So I think it's you know it's an ironic twist. I mean, you don't want to. It, it's a fine line. Again, pick one item for military and then pair it with something soft. Like if you're doing a pair of camel pants, pair it with, again, a soft, more feminine top, you know, maybe a, a silk bow blouse or something like right. that. Um, choose one item at a time. Because like I said before, we don't want to be too matchy-matchy. Not too matchy-matchy. And sometimes you can also, especially with military, you can start looking a little bit costumey. And that same goes for another big trend is, is sort of a 1950s retro look. And again, you don't, I mean, we love Mad Men and there are lots of styles inspired by Mad Men right now, but you don't want to do everything at once because then as beautiful as you might look, you look too costumey. You have to keep it modern. So pick one element and go with it. And just coming full circle and talking about handbags again. I know that before everyone had a Louis Vuitton bag or a Gucci bag with the print actually on the bag. Is that still in? Yeah. The the you know, it's funny, the the very overt logo trend really goes in and out and that's something that was super big in the nineties, but now we're seeing a little bit less of the overt logos. It's really about subtle luxury. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Katrina, absolutely. for coming. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely learned a lot of things. I will never wear black nail polish anymore. It'll, it'll come around And neither again. will I. And neither will Rick. <laughs> That's a good thing. So, Rick, what do we have next? Well, um, we're going to cut the slate really briefly, and then Chef Bill Telepan, who is just upstairs doing his pasta dish, he's going to um, offer a quick tip um, for pasta preparation. Is he bringing food? I, I didn't see any. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry Gina. Did you have any food out in the plaza? No. So, um, we'll we'll have back. to go to his restaurant. We don't there'll eat be food. The there'll role. be f his his dish is probably out in the kitchen there uh, in, in two seconds. Okay, we'll be back. All right, <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> 